Malaria was something I personally experienced when I started my clinical years at the medical school. I actually found myself getting sick, having fevers, and in a very short period of time I was diagnosed with malaria. The malaria was not responding to the treatment in the time frame expected. To be told it was severe malaria was something that struck me because I was very acutely ill. I had to be uh, given intravenous medication, which was very unpleasant. I got quite sick. The disease made me feel so weak. I recognized that malaria, which I was taught in medical school, was supposed to be a preventable and treatable disease, was actually quite a severe and serious and life-threatening disease. So when I had the opportunity to grow in my profession and I started to practice and to take care of the patients, I realized that I had a passion. I thought, if I can make a difference in whichever way, the path I'll take is to work on not only treatment for malaria, but see that they that are quite vulnerable take priority. Malaria was the number one cause of morbidity and mortality at the time in the country. Zambia made the bold step to allow the introduction of atomicinin-based combination therapies, which I am glad and proud that they did. There's been evolution over the years and things have improved remarkably. Looking at where we've come from and where we are today, when it comes to preventing and, and treating malaria, I think more could be done reaching the unreached, particularly the uh, rural population. There may be geographical barriers. There may just be knowledge barriers. There may also be certain beliefs and uh, practices that may not entirely be conducive for being able to reach them adequately. While we are talking about ending malaria, that pursuit has to have efforts that are out of the box, and I think we have all the missiles necessary to be able to do that. <laughs>